Good morning, Modern Steaders. It's 13 degrees out right now. Oh, it looks like an ice skating rink behind me. Everything froze up solid last night. Everything that melted, all the driveways and walkways. You have to be cautious walking around today. Good morning, guys. I haven't been showing you that much on camera lately, and people have been asking for you. I actually think we have four roosters out of the Bard Rocks. One, two, three. Where's the fourth one? One, two, three, four. At first, I thought we only had two and then three, and now it's four. On a, on a positive note, they are a dual purpose breed. So the males will be going to freezer camp at some point. Figaro. What are you doing? You want to go in? I don't blame you. Come on in, mister. And we'll be able to make some delicious chicken noodle soup with them. I know that might sound a little, but it's the reality of living on a farm. You going in? Come on, go in. Before we go out and milk Willow, I want to take the clamps off of these cherry boy glue ups and see how they came out. Just so excited to see what it looks like. The glue joint looks nice. Man, that's gorgeous. That came out nice. If you've been watching our channel for a little while now, you probably know I love working with wood. There's just so much beauty in wood. I don't know, I just love it. So many different things you can do with it. You never know what you're gonna get into. Like this rough sawn lumber, it was all gray and plain it down and it just looks beautiful. I just love, there's so many different things that you're able to do with wood. This month, I'm excited to announce we're going to be partnering with Yod Watch out of St. Louis. They make wooden watches, we're doing a $180 giveaway. There's going to be a link in the description down below. If you click on that, you can sign up for the giveaway. And everybody who signs up is going to get 10% off. I'll bring you up close and I'll show you this one. I myself have never seen wood watches until I saw their website. They make wood watches, the bands made out of wood up around where the timepiece goes is made out of wood. It's just beautiful. A lot of their watches are made out of reclaimed wood or sustainably grown wood, which is really awesome. It's a really neat company. They're always coming out with new designs. This month when we're partnering with Yod Watch, we're gonna be doing a $180 giveaway. And then everybody who signs up for the giveaway is also gonna receive a 10% off discount code. I'm gonna put a link in the description down below to sign up for the giveaway. They make men and women's watches. They're really, I just love them. Just never knew that watches could be made out of wood. And I can't wait to find out who wins the giveaway. I bet you Willow is waiting. We better go do our milking. Looks like an ice skating rink out here. Thank for the crampons. <sighs> Sorry for the noise, but it keeps me upright. If I wasn't wearing the crampons, I'd be on my butt sliding down this hill. Whew. One of the best investments I've made this winter, that's for sure. <sighs> what a beautiful sunrise. Good morning, girls. Watch out.
Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna try to get you another bill of hay today. Seeing if you like this kind. You're being picky lately on your hay. You're being picky. I know, I know. You ready, Willow? You ready? I feel like today's gonna be your last day of milking. I'm assuming today's probably gonna be the last day of milking. <laughs> yeah, I don't think there's gonna be much milk in there at all. All done milking. <laughs> Let me show you. This is what we got today. That's it. Willow's all done milking now, so hopefully she's pregnant and come May we'll have some babies on the homestead. All right, come on, Willow. Your last time on the milking stand for a while. Put some pellets in there. There you go. People are always asking why this side is shorter than the other. The way Willow is eating is the way they're supposed to eat out of this hay feeder. And when we got the goats, the kids were too small, they couldn't do that. So I put a box on this side for them to stand on. And now they prefer this side. You're just following us all around this morning, figure I want you. You coming in? You sure this time? Figaro. You can have that. It's not enough for me. I give the chickens of New York City one scoop of grain. A scoop of whole corn kernel. You ready Pluto? And chaff hay. Smells so good. Look at that sky, so beautiful. Give them their grain right on the floor. Put the chaff hay in the bowl. Now they'd rather have the corn and the chaff hay over the grain. When I first started giving them the corn and the chaff hay, they wanted the grain first, so it's interesting to see them switching it up now. We're feeding them the chaff hay and the corn, because I'm trying to see if it'll help them increase their egg production, and if it'll make the yolks of their eggs oranger. For the next few days, I'm gonna be collecting the eggs and keeping them separate, and then we're gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison, and we're gonna see the yolks, and if there's a difference from first day, second day, third day, fourth day, and then when they were just on grain. Be neat to see what the difference is. They are loving it.
We have our one early morning layer. So we got one egg so far. You girls are noisy this morning. Yes, good morning, Moose. Good morning. I gotta take Olivia to an appointment this morning, so I wanna shut the coop up. There's been a lot of predators out and about in the area. When I get home, hopefully I remember, and I'll open the coop up, and we'll let the chickens out. What are you doing, Pluto? Come on. I know, it's icy. Come on. Oh, Figaro's over there teasing you. Let's go. You ready to go? Okay, remind me afterwards, we gotta stop and get some new hay for the goats. Okay. chickens out. You wanna go check on New York City, Tanner? This will be Tanner's first time going to New York City. I wonder what he'll think. Not sure how that happened, but there's a chicken out already. Where have you been hiding? Huh? Chicken there, that'll keep the door open. Moose is thinking about coming out. Ooh, they're loving it. Tanner don't know what to think. Huh? What are them? Them chickens? Ooh, what was that? <laughs> Tanner didn't like Moose's crow, did ya? You're getting cold. We gotta go in. Whoa, what is that strange noise? Yep, Tan is not too sure about moose. <sighs> what do you think? Let's get back to working on the goat kid disputting box that we started building yesterday. get our two sides cut to the length we need them, which is 20 inches long. Something doesn't look 
right, the line that I'm trying to draw is looking all crooked. I wasn't liking how that last cut was coming out, so I want to square up the ends first on the table saw. So we got to get this set up. I don't know if you saw or not, but that was way out of square. That was my issue, is that was way out of square. I went from, I don't know, probably almost half an inch thickness on one side down to nothing on this end. So that'll help me out quite a bit now. I'm gonna finish ripping these boards down to the measurements we need and then I'll be right back. Now we have all the parts and pieces we need for our disc budding box. We got our two end pieces, our bottom board. We have to finish ripping the width of this and the length of it. Once we get the whole box built, this is gonna be the top that'll hinge. So I want to get it cut to the right width after it's all put together. Then these wide boards, are gonna be the sides. We're making this custom for Nigerian dwarf goats. That's the breed of goats that we have here in the homestead. I almost forgot to make this spacer block to go on the inside. I'll show you how that works once we have it assembled. But let's try screwing this together. We'll dr drill it and screw it and see how that holds up. If that's good, we don't have to worry about the boards cracking. I'm not gonna glue these on. And I think we might be in good shape. drill and Kona sink and so far we haven't cracked anywhere everything doesn't want to not everything wants to line up nice so let's kind of force it so it all lines up Nice. So the spacer box is going to go inside the box like so. So when you have your baby goat in here, your kid, the goat can't move forward or backwards. So this way when you're disbudding, I know disbudding is kind of like a hard topic for a lot of people, but you, we're doing it for the safety of the goats and for the safety of us and our other animals. Goats, if they have horns on them, 
They can get stuck in fences. They can get stuck in weird positions from getting hung up with their horns. And they can die from that. So a little pain in the first few days when they're old to burn off the horns so they won't grow. It's worth it in the long run. So especially if you do it properly. So this is going to go inside the box so the kids can't go front or back. And they have something to rest onto also. It's also nice that we were able to screw this together, so if it's too tall, we can make adjustments. This is where we're gonna have to stop this pro. This is where we're gonna have to stop this project for the day. I gotta order one more piece for it. Here's your cat. I think the goat should really like this hay. This looks nice. Did you fall? No. Okay, good. Girl down. Can't hear you. I said this. I said this part is really, really slippery. Take a seat. <laughs> I kind of don't want to. Go, just sit in there. Until we get to that snow. Yeah. Oh. But what if it slides down there? It won't slide down the hill. I'll stop it. Holding on tight. Ah! Mm. Ah. Dad! <laughs> it's sliding sideways. Ah! Ah! I'm gonna go down the hill! <laughs> yeah, it's gonna go down the hill. <gasps> oh, it's gonna go down the hill! Bring it over there to the story. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's slippery when the sled's going down sideways. Yeah. Be careful. The goats are saying, would you two stop <laughs> fooling around and get the hay over here? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I said this <laughs> Look at that. Oh. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> That's ice for you. Uh -huh. Does that look like good hay, Willow? Uh -huh. Does that look like good hay? What? I hope she doesn't have any babies in there. Wow, the poop's frozen. And then she went. They seem spunky today. The willow? All of them. Slow down, get over I here. I saw Come on. Willow wiggle her tail. I know. I noticed that too. Willow, I can't pull you today. Hey. <laughs> get out. Willow, get out. Bet you girls will like this hay. Go for it. You're going to love that one. That's some good hay.
they'll have that flake gone in no time. You liking it out here, Moose? I bet you guys do like it, huh? <laughs> you ate all the greens and the corn. I like seeing that. I want you to go back in, honey. There you go. Go in. I'll lock you up for the night. I'll let you out tomorrow. I bet they like being out for the day, huh, Lippies? Can't walk up it? I'll give you a sled ride instead. Whoa! Tonight in the homestead kitchen, we're gonna make some General Lumna's pork. <laughs> Let's go over to the stove and start cooking. First, we wanna get the pot on, get it warming up. We're gonna heat up some olive oil. Now that the oil is a little warm, we're gonna mince up four cloves of garlic. Once the garlic's been sauteed, I'm going to add in half a cup of chicken stock or water. Six tablespoons of tamari sauce. I'm making a double batch of this right now. I'm going to pop the top off. It's taking too long for me. Six tablespoons of rice vinegar. I'm sure I'm gonna say this wrong. We're gonna add in four tablespoons of hootsin sauce. Yeah, I have no idea. Four teaspoons, sorry, of this sauce. Sugar. Then I'm gonna add in a slurry of cornstarch and water that I made. It's two tablespoons of cornstarch and two tablespoons of water. Just keep stirring it until we get a nice consistency. The other night I cooked up two pork roasts. I'll put a link to the video right here. And I did that knowing that tonight I'd want to make some General Al's pork. It's really General somebody's chicken. But we're not using chicken, we're using pork. And we're not frying it. I got that source, source sauce going. And then I'm gonna put our pork once it's chopped up and diced up in the sauce and it's gonna warm up that way. I'm 
Give that a nice stir in there. Get it all covered up. And I'll let that, let that sit on low heat for oh, about a half hour, 45 minutes. In the meantime, we'll get our broccoli and rice ready. Tao's chicken glaze, I think that's how you say it. I can't pronounce it, that's why I kept saying general alumnus. But that glaze was delicious. That broccoli, oh, that was to die for over the rice. Man, that was just so good. You'll have to try that recipe. I'll have the link for that and the link for the giveaway in the description down below. Can't wait to find out who's the lucky winner to get the gift card towards a wooden watch. Just so exciting. Um, we have all this ice out in the yard it's crazy but even with all that ice I am so looking forward to spring and listening to the birds chirping while we were outside working with the saws it was just a just like a glimmer in my heart of going man spring is right around the corner we're still buried in snow we got ice everywhere but before you know it spring is gonna be here and I can't wait hope you all are looking forward to springtime I know some of you are gonna have spring sooner or a lot sooner than us but Man, it's going to be here right around the corner. For those of us who live in the northern countries, it's going to be here. And I think it's going to be a great spring. So thanks for coming along on our journey with us. You guys are a true blessing to our family. And we'll see you right back here in the next video at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom.